Hi, everybody. Erin here. I hope you're doing well. I wanted to take a few minutes to um, share with you about my CPA exam journey. So a lot of you have asked in the comments and have sent me messages about, you know, how did you get to CPA? What worked for you? So I thought I would uh, share that with you today in our video. A couple things to note before I get started. One of the things that I always lead with in terms of sharing my personal journey to the CPA is that what worked for me and what worked for your best friend and what worked for your mom or dad who's a CPA or anyone else that you know may not work for you. So what I'm going to share is simply what worked for me, what I did, and you know, take parts of it that will work for you. It's not intended as a prescription or what should work for you, what you should do. What I would encourage you to do if you're asking or interested in my journey or asking other people what they did to get to CPA is to really listen through the lens of what parts, what pieces or parts of this journey or this approach could I take and implement. Not necessarily looking to apply my approach or anyone else's directly to you 100% and do, you know, step by step what I did, because again, that won't work, but look for little parts of it that you might be able to add in or, um, you know, supplement your current strategy with assuming that it's really aligned with your learning style. So that's really important. Um, all right, well, where to begin? So I passed my CPA exam in 2009, but let's back up a little bit. In 2008, I graduated college. I moved from Ohio to San Diego, California. I did that on a pretty short notice. So I actually had an offer to start working in public accounting in the Ohio area, but knew that I really wanted to move to California. So I called them, I reached out, I said, what are the chances that you could move my offer to San Diego? And they said, absolutely not, no way. Um, and through some sort of, you know, universal, you know, the universe was pulling for me, I guess you could say, but I ended up being offered a position here in the San Diego office uh, for one of the big four, working as an auditor. So I've started my job now, it's September. Now, September, if you're familiar with the audit practice in public firms is generally not a terribly busy season. And for my clients in particular, it was a slow season. So I was brand new on the job, fairly useless to the teams yet. I didn't have a lot of experience to bring to my teams yet. And I was newly trained and it was not a very busy time. So just know that that was the environment that I was walking into. Yes, it was the big four, but it was a slow time. We were just getting into planning and getting ready for the engagements in the spring. A few other things to note about my situation that I really think worked in my favor, but that may not be present in your situation. One is I was brand new to a new city. I didn't know anyone here, right? I came here with no friends my age. I had some family friends in the area, but generally speaking, I was on my own. I didn't have a lot of those social distractions, at least from the very beginning. Um, I was also walking into uh, an organization where I had a nice group of friends that I started working with, which was great. And they were all in the same boat. We were all pursuing the CPA. So literally all of the people in my social circle here in this new city were all pursuing the CPA exam together. And then number three, um, I was single, I have no kids, I had nothing else going on really. And then finally, um, and I think number four, the most important thing is that I had some time to study uh, during work. So if we weren't, that was just something my firm was supportive of. If we didn't have billable work to do, we were permitted um, oftentimes to spend time studying uh, during the work day, which certainly helps. Now, to be honest with you, I don't remember doing a whole lot of that. I remember being fairly uh, utilized during the day at the office, but what really helped for me was uh, one of my managers su suggested to me that I put a timeline on the CPA exam. I went into it thinking, well, this is probably not going to be the most fun, right? I am going to have to make some sacrifices during this time, so I want to make it as short as possible. 
So I committed myself to six months. What that meant for me is, again, I tested during the time before continuous testing. So I had to also contend with busy season, blackout periods, et cetera, et cetera. And they also did not do the 10 day extension into December. So we could only test in October and November, not December and none of September either. So I did not begin studying until after I started working. So I only had um, really that period of time. And then of course, busy season to contend with. So I said, I'm going to really dedicate myself to this for the next six months. That gives me, you know, probably one or two blackout months during that time, some period of time during busy season where I may not be able to study as heavily as I normally would. Uh, but I basically just want this period of time that is no fun to be as short as possible. That was my overall mindset walking into the exam. So I dedicated myself to that. I set my mindset around about four to five weeks for each exam. Um, again, that does not work for everybody. That certainly doesn't work for people that are juggling um, high level positions or, you know, in flexible or unpredictable work hours or have other responsibilities at home besides themselves. So just, you know, really, I say that with a, a big time asterisk caveat with it. But that's what I did. I said four to five weeks for each exam. I went home. I studied every single night. I often studied on the weekends as well, quite a few hours. And then I would give myself some free time. I did allow myself to have social activities, to spend time with friends, to do things on the weekends, but I did it responsibly knowing that I also had to dedicate time to studying um, on the weekends also. So I think the key things so far in what I've shared is I committed myself to a time frame and a plan. Uh, and then I also, uh, you know, made my decisions accordingly. I kept the CPA exam as a high priority in my life. Uh, there were plenty of other distractions, maybe not as many as you might have, because again, my whole social circle was also studying for the CPA exam. So I had a support group built in and I didn't have, uh, you know, a ton of people on a regular basis, you know, encouraging me to go do things that were counter to my studying goals. Uh, in terms of actual studying, I used um, Becker CPA. I, I, it worked very well for me. I did not use supplemental materials at the time. Uh, current, you know, fast forward to current day, a lot of my clients use Becker. Also, obviously, it's um, often the study material of choice for a lot of accounting firms. But all there's all sorts of programs out there. I've had people have success with almost all of the the major, you know, heavy hitter players uh, in terms of study materials. So I used Becker on its own. I very thoroughly watched all of the lectures. I remember following along in the book, doing the highlighting, underlining, et cetera, that they recommended in the lectures. And then I would make sure to do a lot of practice. So I would do practice right after I completed the lecture. And I also carved out time to um, practice questions and do simulations and really test my knowledge along the way. My, my whole thing as a student was I never wanted any surprises. I didn't want to go in. I think that's the worst feeling when you go into a test thinking you know what you need to know and you get surprised at the end of it. You know, something was on there that you weren't expecting or, oh my gosh, like I'm actually not ready for this test turns out. So I wanted to do whatever I could during my study process to make sure that I had sort of ticked all the boxes and that I was comfortable with the material and comfortable with my ability to handle what was thrown at me on the exam. So I did that from doing practice exams and you know practice simulations. I really just tried to challenge myself as much as I could um, during my study process. And that translated, it worked for me. It, um, you know, actually at the time, I don't think that Becker had skills practice. I don't recall that being part of my pattern of learning. I remember doing lectures, following along in the book, and then doing questions and simulation practice. So that's something, you know, again, my clients now really enjoy the skills practice. They find that to be a very valuable tool, especially for areas where they're struggling. And then I think for me, in terms of final review, I just truly focused on the things that I wasn't strong at. So I didn't try to predict what may or may not be on the exam. I don't know that I even thought that far ahead to like Google that or look that up and figure out what might be on the exam more likely than not. 
I just focused on shoring up my problem areas and the places where I felt vulnerable to maybe having that rogue question or that thing that could throw me off. So overall, that's, that's how I approached it. That's how I studied for the CPA exam. I started in September. I finished in a, uh, March or April, I guess. I probably took my last exam the first week or so of April. So I did also study through busy season. And then I was licensed by July of that year. So six months of testing, a few more months to get my paperwork and everything sorted. And, and that was it. So again, I hope that there are pieces or parts of this that are valuable or inspiring for you in some way. Um, and again, don't try to take my approach and use it as the only approach for you or think that it is. That's not my job. I don't, um, I don't as a coach and someone who works with candidates for the CPA exam and supports people who have failed the exam over and over. It is really not um, something that I'm an advocate of is you know, saying that my approach is what's going to work for you. It's really about figuring out what works for you and trusting that process, testing that approach, right? By challenging yourself with questions and then um, just monitoring your progress along the way and being willing to adjust if you're noticing that your approach is not working be willing to make some changes and, you know, don't be too proud or attached to that initial plan that you're not willing to change it if it's not getting you the results that you want. Um, so yeah, I think that's it. I think that is really all that I can tell you in terms of my approach. If you are struggling to figure out what the best approach is for you, or you're concerned about getting started, there's all sorts of resources available on my website and I'll link that down below. A lot of free resources available. You can also check out the other videos on this channel and subscribe if you like this video or any of the others, we'd love to have you. And I'd love to hear from you if there are other things that you'd like for me to cover. I'm always open to new topics and answering different questions. Um, I'll also link my social media. That's a lot of, uh, that's oftentimes where I share my content first. Uh, in terms of tips and tricks for the CPA exam. So however I can help, you just let me know and uh, I'll be here to share, share any insights and awareness that I have with you. Uh, good luck to you and cheers to 75s.